Is cash still king today? Now, let me explain to you what kind of cash I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you having a lot of cash in your pocket, like I got a lot of Benjamins in my pocket because if I go out, it's still not about credit cards, it's still about cash and you know, if you have cash, you can negotiate if you got credit. I'm not talking this argument. This is a completely different argument. I'm talking about cash liquid net worth. We got a million dollars of investable cash and someone tells you, you should put 90% of it in the market. Go buy stocks, go buy real estate, go buy this, go buy that and go for the whole thing because you're about to make your big dollars, right? And maybe leave six to 12 months of expenses in your account. Is that the way to go? And somebody else may say, I think you need to keep a half of it liquid. Why? That makes no sense. You're not being aggressive enough. You need to go for the whole thing. Who is right? We're going to talk about that in this episode. And some of the stuff you may agree with, some of the stuff you may say, I don't know if I agree with this. Comment below so I can hear both thoughts as well. You got questions, thoughts, comments, comment below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, click on the subscribe button right here and join the notification squad. Okay, so let's get into it. Look, for the longest time, if you talk to my dad, my friends, everybody would say, Pat is very aggressive with his finances. I'll give you a couple uh, stories here. One, if I went to Vegas and I had a couple hundred dollars, like this is when in 21 years old when I go to Vegas 26 times a year, if I go to Vegas, there would be nights where I would lose $5,500 in one night I lost. And by the way, I couldn't afford to lose 50 bucks, but I lost $5,500 that night because I would just go double, 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 double. It's going to come back. This double. I'm going to double. I'm going to double. I lost 35. Bet 70. I lost 70. Bet 140. Bet 140. Bet 280. 280. 560. 560. 1,000. 20. 1,000. 20. 2,000. Boom. I just lost 3,500 bucks and it was gone, right? I was that aggressive guy. I'd buy penny stocks because I would sit there and I bought a Nike stock once and I bought it at 27. It went to 41 and I said, oh my gosh, I just made this much money. And then another guy turned me on into a penny stock and he said, dude, forget about this Nike stock. Look at this penny stock. If you buy it at six cents, if this thing goes to $2, you just, your money just went 33 X. You put $10,000, that's $330,000. This one kid in our high school took uh, $10,000 from his dad, turned it into $160,000 based on penny stocks. Everybody was talking about, I'm going to be the next penny stock guy. So we're all going for the marbles. Now, once I lost everything and I hit rock bottom and I realized this whole aggressive thing, Pat, where you think no one can get in your way, you may need to readjust your thinking. So I became a cash guy. Everything to me became about having cash. So now watch a story here. What happens in 2010, I'm looking for an office space. And this office space I'm looking for, I wanted a nice office space. I knew the city. I liked San Fernando Valley uh, in California. I wanted to be closer to Woodland Hills, right off the 101 freeway. I liked that shopping center with, uh, uh, what was the movie theater across the street? Was it AMC? I don't know if it was AMC, P.F. Chang's, or just a great spot. And so Marriott was right there. I said, I want a building right here. So my realtor finds a location. He says, Pat, you're going to love this thing. I said, I want a deal. I'm not paying full price. He says, this is a deal. Let's go look at it. We go inside to look at this place. First of all, you could tell whoever that leased this place out spent hundreds of thousands of dollars of fixing a place out. The, the front lobby, you come in marble floor. The desk that was set up was insane. The glass, the way it was set up. Cameras everywhere. The crown, the, 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 the finishes at the top. And then you walk in, the conference room, glass. You press a button. You know, you would have these uh, curtains that would close for privacy. You would have a drop down with the projector that would come out. Wiring. The tables were already wired. TV set up over here. And as you make a right, there's a presentation wall with glass inside where you can put your trophies and recognitions you got from Congress and Senate and all these other people. And then you walk in and then you go into the end, uh, uh, office, the CEO's office. It was a sick office. I look, I said, you got to be kidding me. And I made an offer and they accepted the offer. I couldn't believe the fact they accepted the offer. What happens here? I stay at this place. Then I said, who runs this place? Then one guy comes upstairs one day and he's running a magazine. And he tells me who it is. And I start investigating who this person is. And eventually after calling people around, says, well, this guy had $2 billion plus in commercial holdings. Okay. And he was going for all the marbles. Every cash yet, he would buy commercial properties, commercial properties. He had a lot of locations in Dallas, Phoenix, I think in California, and a few in Chicago. He said, I'm going to be the Trump of SoCal and I'll be a billionaire. This is it. He went all in. Everything he had, every cash was all into real estate. He was never expecting an way to happen. When it happened, boom, he lost 90% of his holdings. Whatever he had, all the way down. 
Buildings used to be 90% rented, it was 50% rented. It was a pretty bad situation here, wasn't it? So I sat and I looked at this thing and I said, wow, pretty interesting what's going on here. Here's a person that's making a run at being a billionaire and they flopped. Is it his fault? Did he do anything different? Did he make a mistake? What would he have done differently? And I started processing this. He was living in a house, 30,000 square foot house with a casino inside his house. When I say casino, I'm not talking about two tables, a full on casino. Like this is a rich man is we're talking about, right? So I came back and our lives, your life, my life is for you to learn from me, for you to learn from your parents, me to learn from my parents, for us to constantly be watching everybody and see what things we can learn to pick up, to do right and to do wrong. And Charlie Munger many times would say inversion, look, he would always talk about the mistakes he made with his kids and mistakes other people made more than the things that people did right. So I sat there and I said, that stayed with my mind saying, Pat, cash is very critical, but you got to know when you're making a run for all the marbles, your strategy, you got to trust some of the principles you have in place. So with that being said, I got a few items here I want to show you so you can be thinking about when it comes down to is cash still king today. Right behind me, I have all the dates of history of recessions we've had in America, okay? Now, a lot of times people say, Pat, what's a recession? What's a depression? You know, sometimes we don't even know what a recession or a depression. It's actually very simple. Recession is when a nation has a wide economic decline that lasts six months or more. So if it's nine months, it's a recession. If it's seven months, it's a recession. When the market's kind of going like this, six months, it's a recession. We don't have a recover. If it goes for several years, three to five years, it becomes a depression. That's why we've only had one depression in the history of America, okay? Since 1929 is the last one that we had. Now, knowing that, how many recessions have we had in America? Since 1854, we have had 33 different recessions. Since 1854, that's 33 different recessions. What does that mean to you? 33 in 164 years, which means one every five years, we have a recession. Every five years, we have a recession. Let me show this to you. 1945, we had a recession. It lasted eight months. 1949, we had a recession. It lasted 11 months. Remember, four years. 53, we had a recession. It lasted 10 months, four years. 57, we had a recession, it lasted eight months. Look at the gap again, four years. 1970, we had a recession, lasted 11 months. That is a decade, right? That's a gap right there. That's positive, that's good. 1973, we had a recession, 16 months. That's a long time. Real estate took a big hit during that time. 1980 to 82, we had two recessions during that period. One lasted six months, it was the first one. Second one lasted 16 months in a two-year gap. 1990, we had an eight-month recession. 2001, we had another recession, lasted eight months. Look at the gap, 10 years again. So we have two of them that are 10 years here. 2008, 2009, mortgage crisis. You remember that one, 18 months. If it would have gone another six, 12, 24 months, that would have been a depression, but it was a recession. What do we have next? We have not had a recession, folks, for nearly nine years. For nine years, we have not had a recession. What does that tell you? probably could happen today, but in the next six to 24 months, we're going to experience a recession. It may be three years, but it's coming. Now, this is the challenge that we're facing here. There are people who think Bitcoin is forever gonna go up and I'm gonna make my billions, and this is how I'm gonna be on the cover of Forbes magazine being the richest person in the world, right? There are people that think, you know, the real estate market is gonna be perfectly right now. Let me put everything I have into the real estate market. Now, if you go long term and you average it out, real estate's gonna give you somewhere between four to six percent. If you go long, long term. If you go long term and average out with the stock market, you'll see between eight to 12 percent, depending on how the market does, right? But regardless of what I'm telling you, if in the back of your mind, this concept of, Pat, I don't want to think negative, I think positive, and I'm optimistic. I used to think everything was about positivity until I realized I am very positive and optimistic about things I have control over, but things you don't have any control over, you can't fully be thinking positive and optimistic. I understand having faith, I understand praying, I understand having a higher law behind you, but you gotta be thinking about the what if, right? Because this leads me to the next point here. When you think about risk taking, everybody falls somewhere in this category of risk taking, right? You got somebody that is so conservative, they will never do anything with their money, ever invest. You can't even convince them to put in the bank because they don't even trust the bank because they believe Armageddon is around the corner. You know any people like that? Typically it's our grandparents and they're so afraid because of a lot of bad things that happen. 
Then you have people that are conservative. I believe in bonds. I believe in having some conservative balanced funds. I believe in this. I believe in that. Everything is just somewhat conservative. Then you have people that are assertive. They do research. They study. Let me look into this Bitcoin thing. What is blockchain? What is cryptocurrency? What is this insurance policy? What is the stock? What is this doing? How is real estate doing? This guy told me about investing to Austin. So let me look into Austin. Let me look into Nashville. Let me look into this community, Victorville. They're talking about California that maybe it's becoming bigger because it's getting closer to Vegas. Should I consider putting my money in there or maybe Palmdale? Well, let me look at this stuff. But they're assertive. assertive. I'm learning. I'm trying to learn. Then you have the guys that are aggressive. You know, I'm going to go for this, and I'm going to go for this, and I'm going to go for this, and I'm going to go for this. These guys, they could have a big hit. Absolutely, they could have a big hit. But they can have a big loss as well. And last but not least, this is just absolutely dumb category. This is, this is the people that, this is the people that actually believe they can fly. You know, this is, this is like, what was that one song, Mario, uh, uh, by uh, uh, R. Kelly? Remember R. Kelly? R. Kelly had a song, and it went something like this. By the way, this is, this is how he would sing if he was singing to these types of people when they invest. This is what it would sound like. He would say, he believes he can fly. He believes he can touch the sky. He thinks about it every night and day. He spreads his wings and crashes away. Because that's what happens to these guys that think everything is possible. Listen, I believe everything is possible. I'm very comfortable trusting a plane to fly me to another place. I was in India, I don't mind a plane flying me over the you know, ocean to go to India. Do I trust myself to go jump off the top of a tower saying, listen, I'm such a positive, optimistic guy that I'm gonna do this thing so fast that I'm gonna fly. Even R. Kelly's not right when he's saying that song. So how do we balance these things here, right? By the way, remember this, I'm going to say this quote very slowly and hopefully it resonates. One time, here we go. What sells doesn't always work and what works doesn't always sell. Let me say it one more time. What sells doesn't always work, what works doesn't always sell. What do I mean by this? Well, what sells, imagine if I get up and I sell you a concept, this is what we're going to do, and ta, 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 ta. I sell it so good. But it doesn't necessarily work. And there's another thing that works, but it's so tough to sell, okay? It's so tough to sell because people say, nah, that's boring, nah, I don't like that, but no, no, it's not boring. Try to know and set aside your emotions and be able to process everything logically and say, this makes sense. Or dude, this guy's just trying to sell me, man. He sounds way too excited. He's got a nice salesman smile and he looks very good. I'm just not buying your bullshit. Because what sells doesn't always work. you got to know how to decipher between the two. Typically, the way you learn how to do this is after a lot of people take advantage of you, then you start having that eye and say, let me watch everything out there. So now, having said this, let's go over here. Remember how I talked about all this recession that took place? In 2009, when the market crashed, here's what took place. Ford stock went roughly to a dollar. Matter of fact, it was under a dollar. Imagine if you could buy that stock on that day if you had some cash sitting aside. What if you could buy? Think about if you could buy 10,000 shares at a buck, that's 10,000 bucks. Nine years later, you would have $110,000. $110,000, okay? Citigroup went down to nine bucks. $74 today. Disney went down to 13. I'm wearing a Disney shirt. Went down to 13 today, $103, give or take. B of A went down to 250. $32 today, that's 12X, 13X. Amazon was 34, today it's 1500. Now that's an anomaly, that's a different story. Nike was 12, today is 66. I'm showing you these things because this is not a 6% return. The 6% return means it takes 12 years for your money to double. We're not talking about that kind of stuff. But this happens if you anticipate a recession is about to come up. So having said that, let me show you some companies, companies here that have the most cash. Take a look at this. Walmart's got eight billion in cash today. Procter and Gamble, 15 billion. Pepsi, 17. Amazon, 30. Coca-Cola, 27. GE, 44. Alphabet, which is Google, 95. Microsoft, 133. Apple, 261 billion dollars of cash is what they're sitting on. By the way, this is from a Business Insider article, which was December of 2017. Apple today, give or take, they're at. $285 billion today. And by the way, I'm not even talking about the off offshore dollars that they find out how much some of these companies are sitting on. I'm talking money in America that they have to report because they're public companies, publicly traded companies, right? And by the way, something for you to be thinking about. Walmart, look at this number. This is such an interesting data. It's a completely different topic, but watch this here. Walmart has $8 billion in cash. 
They did $485 billion in top line revenue last year. That's more than Apple and Amazon combined on their top line revenue. But they only have $8 billion in cash. Amazon has four times more cash than Walmart. Why? Because Walmart's retail. Walmart's retail. This is why Walmart is so worried about Amazon. Walmart needs 2.3 million employees to function. Amazon only needs 341,000 and Apple only needs 123,000 and they got $285 billion in cash. The question becomes this, for all these people that say you shouldn't have a lot of cash, do you think the people in the boardroom of Apple that say, man, let's have a lot of cash, you think they're dumb? You think Amazon Jeff Bezos is dumb? You think Tim Cook is dumb? You think people who run Microsoft are dumb? You think Bill Gates? You think, you know, Google guys, Sergey and all these guys, you think they're not that smart? You better believe they're very smart. Now, why are they stashing so much cash away today? Probably because they're anticipating a recession to come up. And when this recession comes up, they're hoping a recession comes up because when the recession comes up, some of the companies that make bad mistakes, they can pick them up on 40 cents on a dollar. 20 cents on a dollar and that's how they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger because they have cash. So what does this mean to you? Look, let's go back over here, Mario. Come back with me over here. On this, on this risk factor here, I want you to know, Mario, I'm going to go back and come back. I'm, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want you to think I am telling you to be here. By the way, if you do want to be extremely wealthy one day, if you do want to be possibly a decamillionaire, a hundred, maybe even the B word, you do need to be kind of here. You do. You have to take some risk that maybe have a very big risk. But at the same time, I'm not a fan of people who recommend saying only keep 5% and out of your million dollars, 50 of it keep cash, everything else put in invested. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Here's what I'm not a fan of. Mario, come back with me over here. Here's what I'm not a fan of. If, based on what I showed you, this is not a myth. I'm not selling you this. This is facts. This is 33 recessions since 1854, it's a fact. One every five years is a fact. 2008, 2009, 0119, how long they last? These are facts, these are not myths, these are not ideas, these are not, well, could have piped, these are purely facts. If you look at this, you be the judge of it based on where you're at on that risk side. When do you think a recession is gonna take place? You're gonna say 2025? Because in your mind you wanted to go for another seven years where the market keeps going up? Or are you thinking back there saying, hmm, I think something's about to happen. And let's just say something's about to happen. Great. Don't get scared about it. You see, rich people are not scared about it. The people that I'm talking about, they're not scared about it. They're excited about it. They're ecstatic about it. They're sitting on saying, oh my gosh, this thing's been going and delaying for eight, nine years. The longer it delays, the worse it could be. Now, this is not me projecting and saying, I can't wait for another one to happen. Believe me, I've been going 11 top line revenues quarter as a company, and we're doing very, very good. I'm going to be also be affected by this. But the message I'm giving to you is, realize, cash is still king. This is not in the past. It is still king. Keep your cash. Don't get too aggressive. Don't get too crazy. Don't go to the dumb side. Don't listen to the R. Kelly song thinking you can fly. You can't fly. Nobody can fly. But sit there and strategize yourself to say, oh my gosh, in the next year, two years, three years, five years, something could happen and when it does, oh my goodness, I'm going to capitalize. Look, somebody said, well, Pat, isn't this kind of deceptive? I hope everybody watches this video, but they won't. You know why? Because cat videos do better. Because somebody's sliding and hitting their back and other people laughing at them, it just does better. Because big butts do better. Because six pack just does better on videos. Because pranks do better. Jokes do better than a video. This is boring, this is money, and then people wonder why so few people are wealthy. This isn't something new I'm telling you. This is not something new I'm telling you. Berkshire Hathaway knows this. They buy things on sale. They know this stuff. Very, very wealthy, successful investors fully embrace this concept. The question is, are you going to embrace the concept? Are you still going to be way too optimistic about the fact that everything's going to work out? Because if this is right, in the last seven years, the longest time we've gone without a recession has been 10 years.
and it's only happened one time. And we're at nine years right now since <laughs> our last recession. So we got one more year until recession comes. Are you ready for it? I don't know if you are. Go based on this. So be assertive a little bit. Go do your own due diligence. I got links below. By the way, everything I said to you today, I got a PDF for you. So go below, click on a link. It's in the description. Go to the website, print out the PDF. The PDF's gonna have other links on that as well. Read, educate yourself, and then make your decision based on that to find out how you're gonna capitalize with the cash you have to go out there and when the opportunity comes along, you can take advantage of it. Again, questions, thoughts, comments, comment below. I want to hear from you. And by the way, for you value tainers out there, do you like this style more or do you like the other video when we put all the other stuff up and I don't write on the board? I wanna hear from the true value tainers. Which one do you like more? Again, thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.